What's up, YouTube fam? Today, we're talking about SPF and why you're doing your skin a huge disservice if you're not using it daily. Today's video is another episode of Facts by Nats, a series where we get nerdy about skincare. I've talked about BHA, I've talked about AJ, I've talked about double cleansing, vitamin C. If you want to watch those videos, I'll link that playlist up here. Today, we're talking about the most frequent questions regarding SPF. The first one being, why is SPF important in my routine? What does broad spectrum SPF mean? What's the difference between physical and chemical sunscreen? Well, I have a darker skin tone. I don't need SPF, right? How much and how often do I need to reapply? Isn't the SPF and my CC cream enough? What is exactly the difference between SPF 30 and SPF 50? And then lastly, I will of course talk about my favorite SPFs and also highly loved cold favorites in the skincare community. If you came to hear about something specific, I will put timestamps down below in the description box. Also, for everyone who's new here, my name is Nats. I want my channels to be a space where we take it as realistic and true, but also fun approach to beauty. So if that sounds like your thing, please hit this button. Hit this button. Hit this button. Okay, I'm gonna spare you from any more of that. Now let's get into the video. Actually, I also only use cruelty-free beauty. Now, let's get into the video. First question, why is SPF important in my routine? Well, according to most experts, along with cleansing, SPF is the most essential part of your routine. It's just two of the essential building blocks in your routine and having only those two, like if you have to do the bare minimum, it's cleansing and SPF. But why is SPF so important? Well, except for the fact that it's actually saving your life from skin cancer, it's also one of the best preventative ingredients in your routine. You know how we have all these expensive serums that are supposed to treat? acne, pigmentation, wrinkles, but why are we treating rather than preventing? And this is where SPF makes it grand entree. <laughs> you know the sun, right? The sun's actually peeking, peeking out right now. It's like, hey bitch, is it a beef? Do we have a beef? What's going on? Why are you talking shit about me? <laughs> but really though, we love the sun. We love being in the sun and the sun is good for us in like one way because we get the vitamin D, we get happy from it, all those things. But being in the sun for a long time isn't really good for us because UV light in the sun, it drives inflammation, it causes discoloration, it destroys collagen. There's just so many bad things with UV light. So you know how there's UVA light and then there's UVB light, right? UVA light, it penetrates deep into the skin. It's what destroys the collagen. It causes the discoloration. You know, it gives us all these signs of aging that we really don't want, right? And then there's UVB light that does the damage on the surface layers of the skin, and that is what causes cancer. Second question is, what does broad spectrum SPF mean? If you see it on the bottle, sometimes you're like, what the hell does that mean? It basically means that it protects you from both UVA and UVB light. So you always wanna be looking for that text, broad spectrum SPF on your SPFs. Third question is, What's the difference between chemical and physical SPF? So physical SPF like zinc or titanium dioxide, it will physically block the sun rays from penetrating into the skin. The only con with this is that usually it leaves a white cast and especially for people with darker skin tones, this is a huge issue because it will leave your skin looking ashy, sometimes like a little bit white, sometimes like a little bit almost purple, which is the reason why people with darker skin tones usually stay away from physical SPFs because it just doesn't work for their skin. Chemical ingredients like avobenzone, octosalate, they need to sit on the skin for about 20 minutes for that chemical reaction to happen and for them to form that film that is protecting your skin from the sun. What happens is that they absorb the UV light and then they dispense that as energy. And the con with chemical SPFs is that people with more sensitive skin types can you know get irritation rashes or burning feelings on their skin if you don't want to choose you don't have to there are plenty of products out there that are a combination of both chemical and physical blockers fourth question is i have darker skin i don't need spf right false i was actually watching a video by la beautyologist i'll link her video down below where she was talking about the fact that yes people with darker skin tones they don't get skin cancer as often and when they do get it it's very rarely that it's caused by the sun but there's so many other reasons for you to wear sunscreen first reason is that your skin is still taking damage and even though it's not taking as much damage as for a fair skin person 
Still, the sun is breaking down your collagen. It's causing that pigmentation. And long term, there might be issues with that for you too, even if you do have darker skin. Second reason, which is actually quite a big one, is that if you do have darker skin and you're suffering from acne and breakouts, you know how you get those dark spots? They call it post-inflammatory pigmentation. Those dark spots will live on your face for so much longer if you're not putting SPF on because the SPF is protecting your skin, right? And the sun will make those spots darker and they will live longer on your skin unless you're protecting your skin. The third reason why you need to wear SPF is because if you're a skincare nerd like me and you exfoliate a lot, exfoliating products make your skin more sun sensitive. So you're, you're just putting your skin in a more sensitive state, which is an extra reason to why you need to protect yourself from the sun. Fourth reason that I saw in that video from LA Beautyologist is that a lot of people with darker skin tones, sometimes when they travel to even warmer countries than they live in, they do experience sunburn and sunburn, itchy girl, uncomfortable, itchy, it hurts. Don't put yourself through that. I highly recommend you go and watch that entire video by LA Beautyologist. It's so good, it's so informational. I learned a bunch of new stuff about SPF watching it. We'll link it down below as I said. Next question is how much do I need to apply and how often do I reapply? Now, it varies a little bit, but most of the information that I could find was half a teaspoon for your entire face and neck. Some people say one teaspoon, some people say a fourth. I take about half a teaspoon for my entire face and neck. What I do is I take a little, then I apply, and I apply it in layers. That way it's easier to really get all that product onto my face. Don't forget your ears, don't forget your eyes, don't forget your mouth, don't forget your neck. And I mean, if, you, if your decolletage is showing, I think that you should put sunscreen on that too. Some people ask, do I need to apply it at night? No. From most of the experts that I watch say, no, you don't have to. Some people also ask, do I need to apply sunscreen if I'm inside all day? Most experts that I watch say that you should because UVA rays do penetrate through windows. So if you're sitting close to a window all day, it could be a good idea to apply sunscreen. You don't have to reapply it as often. If you're going outside, it's cloudy, you should still wear it because even though you might not experience direct sun rays on your skin, there's still sun, it's reflecting off of other surfaces, you should wear it every day if you go outside. Next question is, well, I have SPF in my CC cream, is that not enough? No, there are two reasons to why that isn't enough. And that is because you don't apply your CC cream everywhere. You don't apply it to your ears. Most of us don't. Your eyes, your neck, all the way down. So you're not protecting your entire face with the CC cream. And the second reason is that most of the times we don't apply enough of the CC cream. So it will not give us the protection that we need out in the sun. As far as I know, most people don't apply half a teaspoon of your CC cream every morning and then reapply it every two hours. So the last question is, what is the difference between SPF 30 and SPF 50? And the difference is very small. So SPF 30 provides you with 97% protection. SPF 50 provides you with 98% protection. So it really, I mean, I always use SPF 50 because I want that extra 1%. Like if you think about skin cancer, like I'm not playing around, neither do I with uh, pigmentation or wrinkles for that matter, but still skin cancer people. It's more important that you look for what kind of SPF you want. Is it chemical, is it physical, is it a mix? It's also more important that you look for that it's a broad spectrum SPF. So, you know, there's other things that are more important than looking for SPF 30 or 50. Now, lastly, let's talk about my personal faves and also products that are very loved by the skincare community in general. Personally, I I do tend to like chemical SPF better because the physical ones that I've tried, they do leave a little bit of a film on my skin. And nowadays I rarely wear makeup. So, you know, if it's if it leaves a little bit of a white cast, I'm fine if I'm applying makeup on top. But as I said, usually I don't nowadays. So I, I really like either a mix or a pure chemical SPF. My skin is not sensitive towards it. I like light SPFs, I like lotion-y SPFs, especially during spring, summer, fall. During winter, I could do a thicker one, but usually I apply a moisturizer underneath anyways, so I combine a moisturizer and an SPF. So the SPF in itself, it doesn't have to be very thick during winter time. First of all, of course you know that I'm gonna pull out my Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sun SPF 50. I love this stuff, it's amazing, I know that anyone that I've talked to or read reviews, I've never seen anything negative about this product. It's super light, it absorbs into the skin, it feels like a light 
lotion so it's that type of an spf where you barely even feel it on your skin once you completely massaged it in uh, this one is unscented which makes me love it even more except for that i love 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 the formula i also love the fact that it's fairly inexpensive it's also highly accessible anyone in the states can get it most of europe can get it many parts of asia can get it um, purito is south korean so obviously you can get it in south korea um yeah it's just amazing product next up is the polish choice youth extending daily hydrating fluid broad spectrum must be a 50. this one has been talked about for so long and i hadn't tried it and it's fairly new to me and i tried it and i was like wow it's so liquidy it's almost it's a liquid basically but it does have some like i don't know what to say some creaminess a little bit of oiliness to it but it's not oily because i know that people with oily skin love this it dries down almost it's not matte but it's kind of satiny but to me with dry skin it almost there is a little little tiny bit of like a dewy finish love it no scent perfect it's just i mean as i said this is for normal oily or combination skin i have dry skin i love it i can highly recommend it the only thing is it's kind of small and thinking about how much you need to use it doesn't last you for a long time i don't know if i got a small package if there's a bigger one but next time in that case i'll probably get a bigger one this is something i will absolutely keep repurchasing myself next i have the dr curacle sika regen anti dust sun gel <laughs> it's a long name um this is also spf 50. this brand dr curacle might not be known to everyone in the states but they are available in europe and of course in many parts of asia dr curacle is also a south korean brand i think i'm pretty sure they are they're formerly known as lee jihem i'm pretty sure they're south korean um yes it's it's very much consistency wise like purito this one is it says sun gel it's not jelly it's also a little bit lotiony but it does feel even lighter than the purito one so if you really 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 like a light spf this is your guy then i have two loves from a brand called dermatology let me start with the tinted moisturizer spf 46. so dermatology is a us based brand so unfortunately in europe you cannot get them yet from what i know so this is a west coast brand they're quite small i found the brand when i was looking for a dupe for another spf and i can't remember the name of the brand now it's that white bottle with a little bit of red on it whatever they have a tinted spf that people love it's so 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 popular and i wanted to find a cruelty free dupe for that and i googled it and i found dermatology man first of all this is a tinted moisturizer so it is a little bit tinted these are oil free fragrance free and actually quite affordable i pay 20 dollars for one bottle and there's 50 mil in here so i think that that's quite a good price the only thing that kind of puts me off a little bit with this one and the other one from them as well is that it does have a, like a chemical scent to it and it does stay a little bit on your skin throughout the day so if you're very 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 sensitive towards scents then this one might not be for you it doesn't bother me and especially if i put makeup on top i can't feel the the scent anymore but that's the only kind of negative and then we have its kind of sister which is the broad spectrum spf 45 which is kind of the same thing it's just that it's clear then there's a couple of other very popular products that are all kind of very much like the purina one in their consistency they're very lotiony very light they are all um korean beauty brands the first one is the kos rx spf 50 uh, i've had that before it's so so good it's also very light then there's one from claire's that i haven't tried myself but i've heard great things about it, and it's also highly highly popular so you can check that one out too and then lastly there is one from crave beauty they don't it doesn't say that it's spf on on it i've understood that that is because it's a very long process to get an spf approved in the states so it's just there is a sun protection of 50 in it but they can't call it that they can't they can't label it as that i know a lot of people like that one too if you're interested in any of the products i will link all the products that i've talked about down below some of them are affiliate links where i make a small little commission off of that okay you guys that was it for today's video and today's episode of facts by nats i hope you enjoy this i hope it helped you if you have any further questions please let me know down below if you like the video please give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.